The National Broadcasting Company invites you by transcription to join the chase. animal world, there is the hunter and the hunted. Hound and fox, hawk and sparrow, cat and mouse. We in the topmost species have also joined the hunt. But who is to judge precisely which of us are hounds or foxes as we enter the chase? business school, Sam. Strictly social. I ain't placed a bet in years. Well, it's a long story, Sam. You got time to listen? <laughs> You'll die when you hear what happened. It'll positively kill you. Sit down and, and take a load off your arches. <laughs> this is strictly for the birds. You know how I love the horses, like a mother loves their son. Me and Francis used to hit the track four days out of five. Jamaica, Belmont, Havre, de Grassi. I guess I was chased by the gambling bug, but good. But I was improving the breed, wasn't I? The only trouble was I never won. I, I don't know what was wrong with me. When I went to the track, I, I studied the charts and, and, and figured the percentage and, and worked them out like a handicapper, but... Go tell a horse he's figured to win. He's a dumb animal. He can't read the odds. What do you like, Ethel? Looks to me like Sister Katie in the fourth. Sister Katie? She can't lose. Placed and showed the last time out. Today she's racing with pushovers. Mm, I don't know. What you don't know? I got a tip on Waltzmeet. From who? A guy who knows. He sells hot dogs in the booth near the paddock. Listen, it's Sister Katie by three lengths. Mm. How much are you going to bet, Ethel? Six bucks across the board. You want to split? No, I'll stick with Waltz me. I gave her the tip, but she didn't take it. Oh, she thought she knew it all. Sister Katie beat Waltz me by five lengths in that race. Um, they came in sixth and seventh. Johnny Q, Matador, and Thirsty Boy in that order. The making the turn to the stretch. Now it's Matador, Johnny Q, and Thirsty Boy. Thirsty Boy coming up. Matador holding the lead by a leaf. Johnny Q second, Thirsty Boy third. Matador at the finish. Please hold your parimutuel to the... What horse did you have, Ethel? Speed Demon. He just passed the three-quarter turn. Shuffle in the stretch, followed by Mr. Cooper. Dark Eyes, moving up to make a bid now. Dark Eyes, come on, you Dark Eyes. Dark Eyes, passing Mr. Cooper, moving up on Shuffle. Neck and neck, Shuffle and Dark Eyes. Dark Eyes, you'll get him, Dark Eyes. He's moving up, he's passing Shuffle. Look at him, Francis, look. What am I yelling for? That ain't my horse. And that's how it went, Sam. If I picked a sure thing, they scratched them. When I took a chance, I lost. Hard luck, Ethel, that was me. And like Francis said in the subway that day when we was coming home from the track, you know what, Ethel? Huh? You ought to quit. The horses? Yeah. Oh. You're jinxed, Ethel. Well, you lost everything but your permanent this afternoon. Oh, but I like to play the nags, Francis. It's so exciting. Mm. It's too rich for your blood, Ethel. Well, 
With me, it's a passing fancy. Mm -hmm. With you, it's like a disease. Why don't you settle down with some nice guy and raise a family? Hmm. If I had your looks, I'd have been married years ago. Men don't interest me. Only horses. Then marry a horse. <laughs> Fancy. You're better off married to one than losing your pay on him every week. I guess you're right, but... Uh, what are you looking at? Uh, that sign. The advertisement. Up there over the seat. For hair bleach? Uh-uh. Next to it. Uh, the crystal ball. Look at what it says, Francis. Madam Zaza solves your problems, foretells the future, <laughs> private consultations arranged. So what? Uh, I'm going up to see her, Francis. What for? Don't you get the angle? If she can look into the future, maybe she'll give me some hot tips. Oh, Ethel, are you cracked? Huh? If she knew a good horse, she'd play him herself. Oh, anyway, I'm going tomorrow. You want to come, Francis? Mm, I got better ways to waste my money. Oh, you don't believe in fortune telling? No. Hey, hey, here's my station. You sure you don't want to see Madame Zaza with me? Positive. They're fakes, every one of them. But, Ethel, yeah. uh, if she does give you a hot one, mm -hmm. you may as well uh, put down two on the nose for me. <laughs> Well, Sam, the next day was Saturday, and I went up to Madame Zaza's at noon. <laughs> a guy with a turban on his head and, and a ring in his ear <laughs> let me into the apartment and, and sat me down right in front of the crystal ball and, and, and then called his boss. You wish to consult with me? Uh, uh, Madame Zaza? Yes. Uh, my name's Ethel Hoyter. I want my fortune told. Sit right where you are, my dear, uh -huh. and face the crystal ball. Uh, li like this? Sherzade, dim the lights. Uh. Gaze into the crystal, my dear, uh. and tell me what you see. Uh. Uh. Nothing. Hmm. Keep looking into the depth. Soon you will see your future. Foretold in all its glory. Oh, you mean it? Gabe, <sighs> do you have any questions of import, my dear? Um, who's going to win the fifth at Jamaica this afternoon? Huh? Uh, oh, I beg your pardon? The fifth, the Buckle Cup Handicap. Ah, oh, you are speaking of racing, Miss Hoyt. Match. I am not a professional tipster, my dear. Oh, but... but but I thought you could see into the future. Of course. However, I deal in more important matters than horse races. Gaze. Uh, Gaze down into the crystal uh, ball. Gaze. You see something? Yes. What? I see that you will become lucky very soon. You mean I'm going to win once? More than once. Yeah. Five times the goddess of luck will smile down at you, and oh. five times you will reap a reward. It is written in the stars. Five times? Oh, boy! With a five-horse parlay, I'll be in the chips. But beware. Of what? I see a man. A man? He's tall and he's handsome, and he will follow you and chase you until he traps you. Traps me? Why? Because, my dear... He wants to kill you. That will be two dollars. Two bucks. Two bucks I had to pay to tell me that. It scared the daylight out of me. It, it worried me so much. I, I could hardly read the dope sheet on my way to the track that afternoon. And when I met Francis near the clubhouse. Ethel. Hello, Francis. What's the matter? You're so late. You missed the first two races. I know. For a while, I didn't think I'd get here at all. You're kidding. I, I went to that fortune teller. Yeah? A and you were right. She's nothing but a fake, Francis. Everything she told me was eyewash. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. When Francis Becker gives you advice, you take it. Yeah. You only wasted your cash, yeah. you see? She didn't give you a tip, huh? Tip? <laughs> she didn't even know what a horse race was. Strictly a square, that's all. Strictly... Yeah. There they go, Ethel. Yeah. It's Georgia Peach on the outside of the one lane. Private Eye, second. Private Eye, that's my uh, nag, Ethel. I got five on him to place. Private Eye, moving up on Georgia Peach. Turntable, now making a bid, followed by Bezelbob. Private Eye, right on, cowboy! 
Agatha, what's the matter? Nothing. Didn't you place a bet? Yeah, I bet. What horse? He ain't in the money. Ah, uh, uh, Private Eye going to the lead for the second time. Turntable passing Georgia Peach. Beaselbub coming up to make a bid. Private Eye, oh, you can't. Rumba, moving up from sixth place to fifth. No, fourth. Rumba in fourth place. Private Eye, Georgia Peach, and Rumba in that order as they come into the stretch. Run! Rumba now passing Georgia Peach, running neck and neck with Private Eye. Rumba passing Private Eye to win. It's Rumba, Private Eye, and Georgia Peach. Well, I placed anyway. Let's see what the odds on the board are going to be. Ethel. Yeah? Snap out of it. Huh? Hey, there's the odds. What? Private Eye pays six twenty for place. Look at the odds on Rumba. Holy smoke, he was a 50 to 1 shot. Rumba? Yeah. Who'd you have? Um, uh, Rumba. No. Yeah. Number three. Look at my ticket. You got it, Ethel. I just bet blind, Francis. I didn't even remember my horse's name. Well, until... What did you bet? Five bucks on the nose. Oh, sister, you're in uh, for 250 uh, smackers. Uh, Ethel, you hit the jackpot at last. Uh, Five winners. What? She said I'd have five winners. Who said? Heenly, meeny, miny, mo. Pick a horse and grab the dough. Ethel, are you crazy? You gonna pick a horse with your eyes shut? It doesn't matter. What are you gonna do, Ethel? I'm gonna bet my girdle. Let's kiss you on the lead. Coming down the stretch. Sway back. Moving up. Sway back. Passing. Kiss you. Sway back at the finish. Kiss you next. Please hold your parameters. Sway back. That's you, Ethel. Yeah. Oh, look at the odds. 30 to 1. How much did you bet, Ethel? 250 clams. Meany, meany. Ethel again? French toast. It's French toast in the fifth. French toast? That's the candidate for the glow factory. I checked the odds on him myself. He can't lose now. I'm getting on him. For how much, Ethel? <laughs> the work. Results of the photo finish, ladies and gentlemen. French toast, followed by Gollywood. No question about it. I think I'm going to finish. Oh, let's see now. 7,500 at 2 to 1. That's 15,000. Ethel, quick. Let's get out of here. Ah, yeah, what for? Before you lose your money. Don't be ridiculous. Meaning, meaning, Ethel, if you mo- dare pick another horse in that crazy way. Bedtime story. Who? Bedtime story. Story three to one. That's for baby. Um, now that gives me a forty-five thousand clams, Francis, or uh, roughly <laughs> nine mink coats. Ethel. Eeny, meeny, my. No. No what? I won't let you do it. Oh, just one more race, Francis, and then I'm through. Five winners, she said, and I got four. Uh, excuse me. What? Haven't we met before? Well, no, I, Ethel. We never seen you before, Mister Never. My name is Bertram. Uh, Francis, Bertram. what? Let's go. Uh, but, ladies, I, I didn't mean. Stop pulling me, Ethel. We gotta get away. Ethel, stop. Now, what's oh. got into you? He didn't mean any harm. He's such a nice, tall, handsome gentleman. That's the trouble. What's the trouble? Madame Zaza told me. He's walking our way again, Ethel. And you know, I'm almost sure I've seen him someplace. You said you wanted to go home, Francis. Come on. But Ethel. Run, Francis, run. He was just like Madame Zaza said he'd be. Tall and handsome and and maybe looking around for a piece of throat to cut. She told me I was going to get me five winners and so far she was right. But if I could help it, that was the only part of her prophecy that was going to come true. Who's there? Ethel Hoyt, Mrs. Ryan. I, I got the rent I owe you. It's $80, ain't it? Well, yes, it is. And it's uh, a mighty welcome sight to you. Just see, I can tell you, Miss Hoyt. Uh, Seems today is my lucky day. I just I, rented my last room about an hour ago. 65 75 80. That's right. <laughs> and here's $50 in advance. Well, save the lie. Did he come into a fortune, Miss Hoyt? I'm doing okay now. <laughs> Stay away from the horses, are you? Horses? Well, now, don't take no offense, well, girlie. I was just saying to my old man, Ryan himself, I was saying a nice young girl like that losing all her money at the races. Oh. Well, she should be taking care of a mess of kids, I said. Yeah, but, but, but I won, Mrs. Ryan. 
Did you now? Thousands of dollars. Thanks alive, you don't mean. I, I'm rich, uh, and don't be afraid, Mrs. Ryan. I ain't moving. I, well, I like your boarding house, and, and I like you, oh, too. Well. Yeah, I'll keep my room no matter how much I win. But why why the sudden change of luck? It well, seems to me that you was always the loser, wasn't you? I, I had my fortune told. Oh, you did, did you? Ha, uh, uh, Madam Zaza, uh-huh. for two bucks, she said I'd get five winners in a row, and, and so far I only got four. So, so you see, that gives me one more to go, Mrs. Ryan. And if I bet my shirt, I'll end up so rich, I, I'll take my beards and malted milk. <laughs> uh, uh, excuse me, uh, I'd better call a bookie. <laughs> He'll have to set up a corporation to handle a bet like mine. Uh, Sam? Oh, oh, well, where is he? Oh, well, who's this? Oh, Louie, Ethel Hoyt. Uh, Sam knows me. I want to place a bet tomorrow in the first race. Um, what horse? <laughs> well, uh, name some names. Hmm, yeah. Um, uh, wait. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Louie, I'll ride my dough on Scarbrain. That's right, Scarbrain, the first. 45,000. Oh, you heard me. So what? Get yourself a syndicate. Can you handle? Okay. Oh, good evening to you, Mr. Park. Good evening. <gasps> yeah, I- I'll call you. <gasps> you uh, didn't give me a key, Mrs. Ryan. Well, I left one in your room. You'll find it on your dressing table. Oh, thank you. Oh, he's a fine young man, isn't he? I- oh, Miss Horace, what's wrong with you? You're as pale as a ghost. Is, is, is that your new boarder, Mrs. Ryan? Yes, Mr. Bertram Parks. I gotta get out of here. What? He's a tall one. The guy could track. I gotta move. What, Miss Horace? I'll write and tell you where to send my clothes. Keep that money I gave you instead of notice. But don't tell him you're here. I don't want him to follow me. I don't want Madame Zaza to turn out to be right. He must have known. He must have known just where I lived, and, and he followed me. The first thing I thought of was leaving town, and... And then I figured I, I'd see Frances first and, and ask her advice. So an hour later, I wound up in her apartment. Hello, Frances. Ethel, what are you doing here? You don't mind my waiting in your flat, do you? The, the, the landlady let me in. Gee, what's the matter with you, Ethel? You look like you're going to be sick. I ain't gonna. I am. What happened? I saw him again. Who? Oh. The guy who spoke to us at the track. Oh, you mean Bertram. You know his name? Sure, he mentioned it, didn't he? Besides, he called me up. He called you up? (laughs) You want to know something funny? We both work in the same building. That's why he said he saw me someplace Uh, before. He must have seen me go into my office uh, once because he phoned while I was typing a letter for uh, Mr. Sweet. (laughs) Gee, Mr. Sweet was fit to be tired. Never mind, Mr. Sweet. What did he want? Uh, Bertram? Yeah. (laughs) He wanted your number. My number? Hmm, Where you work. Did you... Did you give it to him, Francis? Well, yeah. Oh, Francis. Oh, now look, honey, oh. you're taking this Madame Zaza too serious. Oh. This fella's such a nice-looking oh. guy, honest. If it wasn't that I got my bill, I'd go for him myself. Oh, but Madame Zaza... Oh, now look. Well, how do you know this is the guy she meant? Well, anyway, it's all a lot of malarkey. You won them races because you got the brakes. Oh. Not because well. Madame Zaza said you'd win. Well, now you got a chance to meet a clean-cut fella for a change. Oh, don't be a lemon, Ethel. You can't stay single for the rest of your life. <laughs> he, 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 he did look nice, didn't he? <laughs> he looks like a sport. Listen, huh? if he calls you up, let's make it a fourth. Ooh. You and Bertram, Bill and me. How about it? Well, I don't... Well, we could go to a Broadway show, maybe. Oh. If he calls by tomorrow night. Oh, well... Let's look up and see what's playing in the papers. Huh? Papers? Well... Mm. How about a musical? Oh, let's see. <gasps> Francis. What's the matter? The headline on the back. What headline? Woman strangler on the loose. Hmm. <sighs> Police looking for slayer of two girls. Have they, have they got a description of them? Well, let's see. Huh? Five foot eleven. What? Dark hair. <gasps> wearing a light gray suit. <gasps> Oh, now wait a minute. Oh, there's no oh. doubt about it. He, he's a nut and, and he wants to kill me. There's a million guys who look just like this description. Not for me, Francis. Not after what Madame Zaza said. Oh, but now I can't even leave town. Why not? I bet all my money on Scatterbrain in the first tomorrow. I gotta wait to collect. 
Oh, what am you I going to... You really do? are worried, ain't you, kid? Oh, maybe I ought to call the police. Huh? But what do you tell them? Well, he ain't done nothing yet. You put that description in the papers. You still ain't sure, Ethel. Well, you can't go making trouble for an innocent guy. Oh, he ain't innocent, Francis. He's the fellow Madame thought I was talking about. Oh, Francis, Francis, what am I going to do? Huh? <laughs> you want to stay here? Uh, I guess I better, huh? Mm, the couch opens up and the, oh. there's plenty of room. Oh. After a good night's sleep, you... <laughs> Hello? Is this Miss Decker? Uh, yeah. Uh, this is Bertram Parks. Uh, who is it, Francis? Oh, now calm down, oh. Ethel. Uh, what is it, Bertram? <gasps> Don't tell him I'm here. Can uh, you give me Miss Hoyt's home address? Her home address? He's lying, Francis. He knows where I, he knows where I live. He, he moved into the same moving house. I'd like very much to get in touch with her, Miss Decker. No, I'm sorry. I can't help you. You uh, don't know where she lives? Well, I used to, but uh, she moved. Ah. Uh, well, no matter. I'll find her home address when I call her office in the morning. Thanks, anyway. Don't mention it. He sure is anxious to get hold of you. You're telling me? What are you going to do, Ethel? Collect my winnings tomorrow and blow. Lock up tight, Francis, huh? and, and, and put that dresser in front of the door. I'm staying for the night. But I couldn't sleep. All night long, I dreamed about Bertram. He had four legs and a tail like whirl away. And instead of words coming out of his mouth when he talked, he neighed. And then once I thought I heard the window open. I lifted my head from the pillow and saw him sneaking in with a butcher knife in his hand and murder in his eye. Francis, Francis, wake up. Francis. Don't bother to call him as Hoyt. She won't hear you. Won't hear me. I drugged her with horse liniment. Uh, what do you want? You, my dear. You're gonna kill me? Natch. But I ain't done nothing to you, Bertie. You're alive, aren't you? That alone is an insult. You're cracked. Like a plate glass window. Look, look, I, I got money. I, I'll win a big stake tomorrow and, and, and I'll give it all to you. Money, money doesn't interest me. I'm only interested, Miss Hoyt, in you. No! Keep away from me. Only in you, Miss Hoyt? No. <laughs> one here but us. Oh, what's that? Take it easy. Easy. What? It's just what? the alarm clock. Oh. 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 Well, another day, another dollar. Oh. Time to go to work. Oh, don't leave me, Francis. Oh, but I gotta get to the office, kid. I'm scared to be alone. Well, I tell you what. You stay here until I get back this afternoon. Meantime, I'll make inquiries. Oh, what kind of inquiry? About Bertram. Oh. I'll do a little detective work. Uh -huh. And if he sounds like the nut the cops are looking uh -huh. for, I'll give them a ring. Oh, all right, Francis, I'll wait. I locked and, and, and bolted the door after Francis left him. Then sat near the window with a hammer in my lap. And, and the hours went by and it got to be post time. I started wondering about the race and how it was... <laughs> working out. <laughs> and happiest one, I tried to get Louie on the phone, but I got no answer. And by the time it got to be two, I just had to look at a paper to get the first result. So uh, I took a chance and left the room, walked down to the corner newsstand. And the street was empty and everything looked copacetic until I reached the stand. There was a guy with his back to me as I started to buy a paper. And when he turned around, I saw it was... Bertram! Miss Hoyt, how nice. Don't come near me. Why, Miss Hoyt? What's the trouble? Don't come near me or I'll yell for a cop. But, Miss Hoyt, uh, come back. Come back. I, I want to talk to you. I ran like a derby winner until my legs turned to rubber. And when I got to Francis's house, I, 
I tore up the stairs and into her room and then grabbed the phone. But it was out of order. Operator! Operator! No. Miss Hoy, are you in there? No. Miss Hoy, may I speak to you for just five minutes? Get away from the door! Get away before I... The door. Like a dope, I left it open. I ran into the next room looking for a knife or a, a hunk of wood, anything to protect myself. But when I heard him behind me, my mind got paralyzed again and I couldn't think. And then I saw another door and I opened it and then jumped through. But it was too late to do anything when I found I just walked into an empty closet. Miss Hoyt, where are you? Miss Hoyt. I'll bang you with this hanger. Miss Hoyt. I'll kill her, you. Ethel. You're lost. My what? Scatterbrain came in fifth. Fifth? Madame Zaza was wrong, <laughs> Ethel. <laughs> What's so funny? You just lost the mint. But, but, but don't you see? Bertram here. If she was wrong about the last race, she must have been wrong about him, too. If my phone wasn't out of order, I could have told you. What? I tried to reach you two hours ago. Oh. They caught that crackhead. Bertram ain't oh. the nut. I'm sorry if I startled you, Miss Hoyt. Oh. I'm terribly sorry. I thought you were ill when you ran away from oh. me, or else I wouldn't have chased you down the street. But what did you want, mister? Why were you after me in the first place? Well, you see, I'm an artist, Miss Hoyt. An uh... artist? Oh, you mean you, you draw pictures and stuff? Mm, for breakfast cereals. For what? You know, breakfast cereals. Shredded wheat, cornflakes. He draws the pictures on the boxes. Mm. And in the advertisement. I just found that out a little while ago myself. I'd uh, like you to pose for me, Miss Hoyt. Uh, you see, you're the picture of health. Uh, a typical American girl. He'll put you on every box of grape nuts in town, Ethel. You'll be famous. Will you pose for me, Miss Hoyt? Uh, for a fee, of course. Uh, 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 I'll do it for nothing. <laughs> and Bertram. Uh, yes, you can call me Ethel. <laughs> now that we're really going to get acquainted. <laughs> so that's the story, Sam. I've been posing now for the last two years. Maybe you've seen me once or twice. I'm in all the supermarkets. Um, Bertram, <laughs> oh, we got married, Sam. <laughs> And we're expecting a coat of uh, a baby from the stork. Oh, Bertram's just as nice a guy as he can be, and, and we're both so happy. Um, the horses? Oh, I never play the horses anymore, Sam. I swore off for good. As far as I'm concerned, the breed can improve without me. But, Sam, if you happen to be near the track tomorrow... If you happen to be near, put five bucks on Fleet Philly for me to win in the third. Chase was created and written for the National Broadcasting Company by Lawrence Klee. In tonight's cast, Norman Rose was heard as Andre. Others in the cast were June Foray, Edgar Staley, and Stefan Schnabel. The Chase was engineered by Lee Kramer, your announcer, Fred Collins. The Chase was directed and transcribed by Walter McGraw. Next week, a toupee transforms a ball-headed man into a fugitive from death in The Chase. Starting the 18th, enjoy the best of Groucho on NBC.